Hey y'all, it's Jess. Welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. I am running down to my garden right now to pick just a few things. Time. Jalapenos. My friend Lauren is here today and she is going to be showing us a fire cider recipe. So this is Lauren. Hi. Um, this is my best friend and she's really into herbalism and has taught me a lot of stuff. Um, I would say that I do a certain level of holistic medicine. I've done essential oils for a really long time so I know a lot about that. But as far as making like homemade remedies and stuff, I've gotten into that a lot more over the last couple years and Lauren's helped a lot with that. So I've invited her here today and she is going to walk us through making a fire cider recipe. Um, and she'll tell us about that. We did this last year. We got together and made a lot of like homemade remedies and it is now closing in on September. So it is the time to be thinking about this stuff. Don't wait until you are showing symptoms of something to start thinking about holistic remedies. That is not setting yourself up for success in that. It's time to start thinking about it now. So. Hey. So these are our basic ingredients for um, your average fire cider recipe. Now I say average fire cider recipe because every fire cider is going to look a little different. Just like my beef stew recipe is going to look different than Jessica's beef stew recipe, but they're both beef stew. This is culinary medicine, so I don't want you to get too caught up in how much of what or I don't have any lemon or whatever. I'm gonna give you a basic overview of why I'm putting what I'm putting in here today. Um, and I'll even give you a little bit of tips of some things that you can put in there that I don't even have here today. Every time I make fire cider, I really just grab what I have um, with a few key ingredients that are always in there. I don't want you to get too stressed about it. This is people's medicine. All of herbal medicine is people's medicine. It's medicine that you should be able to easily make it home very comfortably. All of our kids are playing outside, so Lauren just ran out to check on them, and I'm gonna do some chopping. Okay, so we are making two batches, um, one for each of our households. So we'll tell you what you need for each batch that you're going to make a fire cider. Each batch needs one um, onion, and we're just kind of dicing this up. Okay, and we're putting um, these ingredients into a clean half gallon mason jar. Now, if you don't have a big jar like this, there's no need to buy one special for this. Just separate it out into two quarts or something like that. As you can see, we've got a few good knots of ginger and we're looking for a half a cup of ginger in each batch. So I'm just gonna cut this all up together, uh, chop it up pretty good, and then I'll split it in half between these two batches. With the ginger chop, it's actually probably a little more than half a half a cup each, but like Lauren was saying, this is not an exact science. Um, and so we're just gonna go ahead and put this in here because we've got it, we've got it chopped. It doesn't have to be an exact science. A little extra ginger, just make for a better fire cider. So now I'm gonna chop two jalapenos per batch. Um, you just leave the seeds in since it's gonna be strained at the end anyway. We're also gonna put some garlic in there. Um, and normally I use regular garlic, but this is store has. So this That's... is elephant garlic. And normally I use about 10 cloves. So I'm probably gonna do like one and a half or maybe just two cloves of garlic. You can't really ever have too much garlic. Garlic is actually gonna help promote a healthy gut flora um, while also getting rid of uh, and fighting pathogens that you don't want in there. So it's kind of like your natural antibiotic. You can never have too much. Okay, 
the process of this, we're basically cutting all this stuff up and then we're going to put the vinegar in and then ferment it. So you don't have to be like meticulous in um, your chopping. You don't have to worry about everything being even because at the end, you're going to strain out all of this stuff. We're just gonna let it ferment for a while. And so I just like, you don't have to stress out about making everything exactly perfect. Now we're just gonna get some uh, zest from the lemon, one per jar, and then I'll also uh, juice it in there. All right, so, so far, we've got our onion down here which is an excellent exportant. Um, a ginger is a stimulant for your circulatory system. Uh, you've got the garlic, which I've already told you is antimicrobial. Also, we have our jalapeno in there, which is also just gonna um, up the circulatory uh, heat of this. And then we've got our lemon and lemon zest, which is uh, some vitamin C and really just for flavoring. Um, you don't need the lemon in there if you don't want to. Uh, it does help though when you're tasting this. Um, really, the whole of these together and um, adding in the turmeric and the cayenne, this fire cider is really to get your circul circulatory system moving. And it's going to be really great in the winter, especially if you're a cold natured person, um, to just really help your system get moving and not be stagnant. We're also going to throw in some rose hips, which is a your highest uh, vitamin C content in this. It also, again, is going to really help with your flavor. And then I'm going to throw in some rosemary as well. And then we're going to cover it all with the apple cider vinegar. Um, I always use organic. You can use it raw with the mother. It doesn't have to be raw with the mother. Um, and then we're going to let this sit for six weeks. Just uh, has these fermenting lids so she won't need to burp them because this is going to burp automatically but if you have a regular lid i would one suggest that you use plastic um, if you're going to use the regular metal lids go ahead and put a, a cloth underneath or a filter because the apple cider vinegar is going to oxidize with that metal and create some rust so use a plastic lid if you have the option um, or a cloth and then a lid if you need to um, and then if you are using that lid, you want to burp it every few days. So I'm just going to use just a little bit of cayenne, probably an eight to a quarter teaspoon. Not too much, just enough to give it a little bit of a kick. Turmeric um, is our anti-inflammatory. I don't think I mentioned that earlier. Um, we're also not going to use too much, probably a half teaspoon. If you're using fresh sprigs of rosemary. You can grab just three sprigs or so. I just grab a small handful, probably, I don't know, two tablespoons. Or probably about a good quarter cup of rose hips. And a few sprigs of thyme. Thyme is really great for colds, sore throats, uh, coughs. Cover these with apple cider vinegar. I got these lids on Amazon and I'll link them below. I think they were just like the Amazon Basics brand. They're not any sort of special brand. Um, and basically what they do is release the gas. If you don't have these, you can use a regular lid like Lauren was saying and you just take the lid off and let the gases out once every couple of days. It's called burping uh, lid. That's just a term that's used anytime you're doing any sort of fermenting. Okay, give them a good shake. Um, it's also something you can do every once in a while, uh, every few days. Some people say every day. I'll be honest, I never remember to do that. But every few days, I'll think about it and just go and give them a good shake. Um, and this is going to be your go-to if you have a little bit of a sore throat going on, if you've got uh, any kind of congestion in your sinus, sinuses, your chest, um, any kind of signs of cold and flu, this stuff is going to kick it. So um, 
definitely make your fire cider and now is the time to do it because you're gonna want this come winter time and then you won't have six weeks to make it. Some people don't mind the flavor of fire cider. It definitely has like a really like spicy kick from as you can imagine. It has a kind of salad dressing-y type flavor to it but it is definitely got some heat and you just drink like an ounce of it is that right yes. yeah you just drink like an ounce of it we usually just put it in a glass and kind of take it like a shot and when it is time to strain it out we're gonna also add to taste honey so that also has a sweet and spicy um and i always <laughs> say we've got it someone adding dog food to the mix <laughs> um, i always tell everybody Add the rose hips because that helps have it a more tangy, citrusy flavor to it, and that's what enabled my kids to use it. So my kids drink fire cider. I can't promise you that your kids will drink fire cider, but if you add rose hips, you might have a better shot at it. Fire cider is something that we keep on hand all throughout the winter. I typically make a recipe now, like at the end of the summer, so we've got it through the fall, and then another recipe will start another one as the winter begins so that we have more later on in the winter. Like she said, once it's done fermenting after six weeks, you strain it, you add to taste honey. Um, we use raw local honey because of the properties that that carries. That's very good as far as like kicking allergies. It's good to use local honey. And then you store it at room temperature. You don't have to do anything. That's right, isn't it? You store it at room temperature and um, and just drink an ounce as needed, especially on the onset of any sort of like you feeling a little head cold if you're starting to get a cough, and you can take that a few times a day. The great thing with um, culinary type medicines is you're not gonna overdose on them, you're not gonna overdo them. Just take them and as they help, you can continue to take them. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and post them down in the comment section. I will keep an eye on those. Lauren will keep an eye on those um, to answer if you have anything that you're that you're wondering about. And we'll make sure to type out this recipe down in the about section of this video so that you can take a look at that if you need a list of ingredients or also if you kind of need some idea of how much of each thing to put in. So thank you guys so much. I bless you. Until next time.